Hey guys, welcome to the Heart of David. Um, today's video is going to be about um, if you're drinking alcohol in any way, shape, or form, and you're looking towards God, Jesus Christ, you're seeing what's happening in the world. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what situation you are in. It's a good idea to stop. And so, if you look at my last video, guys, I hope you're all, all doing well. Sometimes I forget to say that. Um, I already prayed for everyone who's going to watch us beforehand. So, if you look at my last video, you can see what I'm talking about. I told you some pretty deep things in my life. Um, I wouldn't, t I won't tell everything about those situations, but I'll give you an outline of to give you a warning, you know, to tell you what happens. And uh, so in that last video, I didn't turn out too well. Uh, later I did, but I went many years in hell because of it. Just things I never forgot. So this one <clears throat> is based on alcohol. Um, but I want to get to some things first. So um, I appreciate people, by the way, who send letters to, to me. And um, just give me a second here, guys. Sometimes I wonder if I forget to take my pain meds. It happens. Um, what was I saying? I appreciate uh, people's letters, um, and I keep forgetting to to put my uh, one of my emails with it. It's the one I use for for just some general stuff, but certainly for for Christian emails. Um, so I appreciate I appreciate all the letters that people send me, and um, and they do they help me they they actually help me they make me feel good I can't like I can't I have a very busy life if you only saw the things that I that I have to do to keep up um, it's not I don't always have a lot of time to answer them but I will try to answer all of them so the last thing I want to talk about before I get to this subject is the subject of hell in the Old Testament, the New Testament. So if you want go back and watch my video from yesterday. And um, by the way, I have a video. I haven't edited it yet. And it was because of Billy Carson <clears throat> that made me want to do another video, a thorough enough video about, um, about the doctrine of hell. You can call it what you want. You just don't even call it a doctrine. Just call it the truth. This is what I'm going to say. So you can quell people. So you can stop on, on in their tracks when they say, well, you know, hell um, translates to Gehenna. And so the answer to that is this. When Jesus was... Jesus was comparing the hell, the, the real hell, hell, to Gehenna. That's all he was doing. That's why, Ge that's why it's tra translated Gehenna, Gehenna, whatever, right? And um, because Jesus was comparing what the real hell was like, it's like Gehenna, the, that garbage dump. You know, people are going to say it's just a garbage dump, but it's... Jesus was comparing and saying, because it's always burning, there's always maggots, it always stinks. That's where they would, you know, like burn, uh, what, dead bodies? Because you had to burn things, you had to get rid of the toxic, uh, you couldn't have that going through the, the air, because it'd be so putrid. Give me a second here, I have a lot of gastritis, pardon me a sec. I know it can be effective to start out a video with the subject immediately. People tend to stick to videos more that way. But there's always things I have to get out of the way uh, first. 
let me take a sip and I'm going to get into this. You can always fast forward. You know what the thing is? People these days just don't have the attention span. Remember I did in a video? I've told you guys probably more than four or five times about uh, Instagram, Facebook, all of these things were designed and I'll just get to the to the bottom of this. When you when I make this video, when I share a post, I don't share a post, okay, I don't do that anymore. But when you do that, when you get likes, when you get all those things, people like okay, you know what? Mark Zuckerberg, I've seen the things about him lately. He is probably the person that's responsible for the way society is with the kids the way they are. Instagram and Facebook. There's no two ways about it. It was made to be addictive, like a drug. So they have measured. Of course, they've, they've probably done thousands, if not tens of thousands of studies. When you take a, uh, uh, when you sniff a line of cocaine, okay, they know, they can measure in your brain, whatever it is, MRI, fMRI, whatever they do, it would be probably functional, a functional one of your brain, fMRI. You can measure how much dopamine you get in your brain from that hit, and it's 400 units. Similarly, when you get a like, you get the same 400 units. Can you imagine? Social media is destroying not just kids' lives, whole generation Z, but also our lives. The only thing higher than that is methamphetamines. And that just destroys a person. Eventually. They know this. They don't do anything about it. And this is what Revelation is probably talking about. They, had, they, had, they haven't repented of what they're doing. It's just unbelievable. That's why people have such short attention spans today. Short clips, you know, it's like the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, right? So, it's not always easy for me to drink. Alcohol. I'm absolutely guilty of abusing alcohol a lot in my life. I was never a weekday drinker. Maybe in the end I was, if it was like to, to, you know, to party or so. It wasn't that often. It was usually the weekend I did it. I'll start from the beginning. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I'm 45, 46 this year. There are women, it's usually women you see, but it's also men, but mostly shows in women, who have got into drinking, you know, they could be just weekend bingers. By the time they're my age, they look like they're 55. It really puts age on you. So if I hope that scares you. I hope I'm talking to the right people. Um... I do have a target demographic here, which is younger people. But of course, it's everyone. I just want to tell you this first. The grace of God, by us putting faith in God, is enough. It's enough to not want to. If you study the Bible, and if you start genuinely trying to do this not going to I'm not going to tell you not to go to a church I'm not going to tell you not to go to a denomination but what I ask you to do is this before you do anything and get caught in something is to read the Bible for yourself from gen, uh, from generation from Genesis to Revelation I have kids now. (coughs) 
think those people just moved in French. From just read the Bible. Don't let anyone else ruin it ruin it for you. Don't let anyone ruin it for you. I find it's you can belong in the Catholic system. You can have all the traditions of men. You start believing all these crazy things. When all you had to do that whole time, that whole time I was in the Catholic system, all I had to do was open up a Bible and and I had read it. But I was always sick when I read it. So, you know, maybe I didn't put two and two together. But so many questionable things came up. Just believe in the Bible itself because that is God. That's a word of God. So if you do that, this does tie into what I'm going to say. What I'm saying is God is good enough. If you could study the Bible and start learning the truth, you try to make it to where you have the indwelling Holy Spirit, you're born again, which means you hate lies, you. First, First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. We believe Christ died for our sins, was on the cross and died and rose for us. If we put our faith that that is, then we are born again. We don't get into our former lives. We're no longer part of the world. We have to be in the world. It doesn't mean we don't have to interact with the world. So I'm going to get back, back to this. This is what I'm saying. You find yourself with the Holy Spirit, and that'll be good enough. You don't have to pick up that drink. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how my life went. 333. I remember, um, you know, stupid kids, um, even though I had CPTSD by age 15, I was still okay outside of, um, outside of school. I didn't feel that good inside of school. You know how it starts, you know, it's just, it's, uh, Maybe my first drink was maybe 14 or something like that with a friend who has now passed away and another friend, um, you know, just, just innocent and stuff like that. One thing leads to another. That's how it happens, right? That's how we all learn this. F feels really good. You know, eventually, I remember we built, uh, we love to go out in the forest. We would have bush bashes and but uh, my particular group of friends, we bought, we um, we took all this wood from a construction site, and we dragged it all the way into the forest, and we built a big fort. And we go there, and we drink, and all that. And uh, I just remember that's when my life started to go out of control because I would black out, and I would, you know, wake up, and I'd be like, you know. I'm sure you know the feeling. What did I do? I could have been in a fight that I didn't even know about. I have bipolar disorder, okay? So I found out I would black out um, at least five times more than my friends. You know, it'd be like one at, once every four or five times I drank. And it didn't have to be a lot. It would mix with the medications. Uh, mood stabilizers that I was put on when I was all the way from 13 because I got in trouble with the law. I was forced on these things. They mixed horribly, uh, horribly with with my um, medications, alcohol did, but I did it anyways. I did it anyways, and you know what? It was the CPTSD and eventually PTSD. I didn't know I had autism. Okay, that's no small thing. My school never recognized it. My parents never recognized it. So I do say, you know, that I have to look at that to be beneficial on my side. I'm not trying to do blame or anything like that, but looking back. What I was trying to do, and by the way, I was so stupid. 
that I would go out, I'd drink a Mickey or, or you know, as much of a 26er as I could, sometimes beer, have a great time out in the woods or wherever we would go. And uh, boy, did I ever hate waking up not knowing what I said. I went through that a million times. I'd wake up in my bed, I'd be like, oh man, you know, like, you know that feeling? It's not funny because those things start building you a horrible reputation and my reputation was tarnished. I didn't pick fights with people. I wasn't that type of person, but I was angry. There were people who picked fights with me and I did. I won't tell you anything about that though. Um, just one, just a single drink can take you down a horrible pathway. And it can lead to other things like cocaine, smoking marijuana, all that type of stuff, which isn't good. Give me a sec. Eventually, alcohol will make you a useless person. It'll make you a useless person because all you think about is having that. I was never physically addicted to it, though. I was lucky that way. I certainly had some friends that were quite messed up with it. I don't talk about other people's lives, though. But I could see what it, what it, you know, what it was doing, and I couldn't say they were, you know, although they looked worse than me, and, and you know, probably were. The things that were happening to me were probably worse than the, you know, short-term type thing as it would happen. I would frequently end up in the psychiatric ward because I'd be brought there, and I wouldn't even remember. I'd wake up in the morning. I'd wake up in the morning and not know what I had done. I don't know what I can tell you more. The things that it can lead you to, it can lead you to, you know, drinking with the wrong people, being around the wrong people, being in the wrong places, places that you have no business being at, because those are the places that someone is likely to pick a fight with you for no reason. It doesn't matter. Would I say it's your fault? No, I wouldn't for being there. But those are the places where you are asking for trouble. And for some reason, people like targeted me. That's what I feel. Um, you know, leads to drugs. You don't know what you're going to do. You take a drink, you take a second one, you take your third one, and here it is. This is why I hope you can associate yourself. You can empathize with me. So if you have autism, anxiety, bipolar, any type of anxiety, depression, Drinking alcohol is going to be the, the, the very opposite of what you're trying to do. It's going to be a short-term fix. And a long-term hell. It will end up somewhere where you hope you never were. You see, for me, I'm very uncomfortable. It's very tough to speak and stay still. For me... I look back at my life. Why was with, why was I with my friends out in a forest for as long as we did? Not that I didn't have fun. Why wasn't I like trying to go to university? All I ever needed in the troubles that I was facing with autism was an outlet. I needed an outlet. Why wasn't I like building things? And uh, you know, I could have. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just going to say I could have been a doctor right now if I would have only applied myself. 
my dad is, so there's no reason why I couldn't be. But I spent a lot of years doing that. So what what is the why are you trying to what are you trying to get rid of is the question. For me I was trying to cover up traumatic things that I had been through, things that I would you know, I would go through my week. And by the way, with these mood stabilizers that I was on, that never really did anything, never really helped me. And you're going to say, well, because you drank alcohol. Well, trust me, I took them without too. It would take me up to five days. Five days. You know, people would wake up with a hangover. I would wake up with like a, a hangover on steroids. And I'm quite certain at times I, I could have almost died. It would take sometimes up to two weeks just to get any normalcy back. Like it was major interactions. I was on the... I was on like lithium drinking a 26er. <laughs> think of the dehydration. Think of the all the things that could have gone wrong. I sure paid a hefty price. I hate it, you know, like like you know, of course in high school, you know, a lot of people were drinking alcohol. This was a time without phones, without computers and all that type of stuff. And it was fun. But uh I noticed I wasn't like other people. I wasn't. I was very uncomfortable in school for reasons I will not share here, but obviously CPTSD, PTSD, those autism, right? It wasn't easy. And imagine I was walking through school after a weekend of drinking with these meds in me. I'd be in complete panic. Um, and in the very least, I would be in a high anxiety attack. And I was so stupid. So let's say I drank on a, on a Friday. It was Friday. And I tended to do that. Just I just wanted to give myself a rest from anxiety. And that was the answer. Saturday, I'd wake up. I'd be so sick. I couldn't wait to get past Sunday, Saturday, to end the Sunday, because those immediate feelings would be kind of gone. But I would feel overdosed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. About Thursday, it was starting to get a bit better. And I felt, you know, I'm like, this is where I need to be. But a Friday or a Saturday would come along and I'd do it again. Don't do that. Don't waste your life away. You don't want to find yourself in a position where so much time passes in your life. So much time passes in your life that you wonder where it went. See, in my life, you know, there was one of those things. In my life, I was sick for a long time, physically. And mentally too at points that just so much time passed by and I'm telling you by putting my faith in God just read the Bible man just start doing that pray that you don't have to take that drink skip it skip it try it once this is a plea so was my other video So what? You're going to allay your anxiety for a short period of time? That's one. Number two, you're going to wake up really sick. And it's going to feel like hell, right? You know, well, just hangovers in general. You, you might wake up thinking, what did I say? What did I do? Maybe you got in a fight. Who knows? You know, you have a girlfriend. You have, say you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Drinking 
uh, on the weekends or binge drinking is going to wreck that. It may not, but, you know, don't take that chance. That kind of happened to me. It's going to wreck your liver. It's going to wreck your, your, your organs. It's going to do something to your stomach. You're going to end up with ulcers in your stomach. Your duodenum, whatever it is. You're going to have GI issues. And you don't ever want to get to the point. You see, the other thing with this, it's the same with doing drugs. It's the same with alcohol you're going to get to the point where you're going to become like OCD. You're going to start taking on all different behaviors associated with it. And that's another thing. If you're doing it because you have a psychiatric or neurodevelopmental thing, it's only going to accentuate it. It's going to potentiate it. It's going to make it stronger. You're looking into the mouth of hell when you open up that bottle. You just don't know it yet. So, and then, you know, the, another thing is all of a sudden you're like Mr. Super, right? You can go around, you can talk to anyone, you start doing that because usually, you know, you, you might just keep to yourself and then you, f you find yourself people trying to fight with you because the things you're saying are stupid. Put your faith in God. Build a life. You can be happy every day. Even if, okay... Even if you have PTSD, even if you have anxiety, bipolar, all of those things, all of those things, you can still find happiness. I see, I did a video on a person with schizophrenia who put their faith in God and um, a lot of their attacks of hearing and seeing things went down. I'm not saying that's guaranteed, but do not limit what the spirit, what God can do. When I said the other day he doesn't like that, I actually read further, he doesn't like that. Is he is the arm of the Lord too short? Right? He says that. Take it from me. I got in a lot of trouble with it. A lot of trouble. Um, you know, I was thrown in the drunk tank quite a number of times. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't go around picking fights and doing stuff like that, but can you imagine, like, with bipolar disorder and autism, the things that I would have said when I was blacking out? You don't even know. Like, it's just like you're gone. You're gone. It's a dream. And you wake up and, yeah, you might start to remember little clips here and there. And that's the worst feeling. You know, all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh, I said this to this person. And then you might have to go to school the next day or you might have to see them somewhere. That's horrible. I'll finish off with this. You see me going back and forth here. It's because of my abdominal pain and my disease in my spine. Um, it means I'm in a lot of pain. I have a lot of colic in my abdomen too. So I'm quite uncomfortable. Even in this, even in this, having to constantly shift and move. And, and uh, I'm not the easiest around people. I'm not the worst either. I can socialize with people if I have to. But I still have that anxiety. I still have all that. My pain causes me a lot of distress. But, you know, I'm kind of used to that. I mean, you'll never get used to the type of pain I have. But you get to a, a point where you just accept it. It's the Holy Spirit. Go look at the story of Jordan Peterson and his wife. Look at that story. It makes me wonder if God did that to Jordan Peterson's wife, healed her of like kidney cancer. The most miraculous thing happened. She was supposed to die. I wonder if he did that so Jordan would start at believing in God 
And I don't actually know the state that he's in, but he seems like he's getting there. And I wonder if he did that because he has such a good, big voice and platform. Everyone knows his name, right? And I'm not saying he's... There's no favoritism with God, so Jordan Peterson is no better than you and I. Excuse me. Nobody. We're all the same in Christ. Put your faith in God. Put your faith in Christ. And the Holy Spirit will enter into you. This is what I'm saying. Do not limit God. He can heal anything. I was about to go into uh, medical assistance and dying. But then God intervened. Here I am on a video. You think before I start, I, I, this is about seven years making videos. I was completely cut off from the outside world because of all my pain disorders. I didn't know what they were. My life was destroyed. All I wanted was made. And to be honest, I deserved it at that point. I started making videos because I didn't know what all these things were. And people were helping me along in these videos, and that's how I got some of my diagnosis, um, which helped. It wasn't easy for me talking in the beginning, but I've done thousands of videos, at least 4,000. 4,000 on another channel, I erased a lot of them because I didn't want some stuff to represent me anymore. I only do videos to try to help people, that's it. And obviously to talk about God. If, if you're an alcoholic and you've listened to this, you're an alcoholic if you're drinking and you think you, you know, if you're having some trouble with it and you constantly think about having another drink, like even if it's just a binge the next weekend, you're an alcoholic. I don't know if I believe that once an alcoholic, also, always an alcoholic, like they say. I never needed AA. All I needed was God. And what I'm saying is God healed my pain on a daily basis would be a 9 out of 10. You guys would be driven insane. But when the Holy Spirit took over, it went down to like an 8. I'm not kidding you. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. And that's the whole, that's the whole basis of what I'm trying to tell you. It's all you need. You may not see it now. You know that fake it till you make it? That's partially true. But I wouldn't go with that. I would just read the Bible. And don't go into the Bible um, with the idea that it's not real. Because if you do that, you're not going to, you're not going to be, you're not going to understand the prophecies. If you really want to know the truth, you will find it. That's where it said, where Jesus says, knocking you will find right the door will be open for you if you're genuine in it I gotta stop this video guys because I'm, I'm kind of sick and I gotta continue eating here God bless you all I said a prayer for you all um, I hope to reach someone who's thinking about drinking who's drinking this is all about people f for that for everybody I'm, I'm specifically though trying to get people young